All right, in this lecture video, let's take a look at uh, topic number 27. So I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. All right, so uh, topic number 27 is about collecting data. So objective number one, let me define what the word statistics is. A statistics is a science of collecting, organizing, summarizing, analyzing information. And the reason why we're doing these one, two, three, four different things is to draw conclusions or answer questions, okay? Things we want to ask and things we, um, or things we want to know, know the answer of. It actually provides, these four things actually provides a major of confidence in any type of conclusions, okay? So by definition, statistics are these four types, okay? We do all four of those things, all right? So in this objective, we're going to talk a little bit about collecting data, and then we will t we will in the next topic we will begin to talk about how to organize and summarizing and analyze information. All right. So what the data is? Data are counts, measurements, okay, or any type of observation that gather about a specific variable in a population in order to study it. Okay, those are the data. Population is referring to a particular group of interest. So right here, I have a picture down here. The population is, is an entire group of interest that we're trying to ask in questions, okay, drawing conclusions on. A sample is simply a subset of the population in which the data is where, where data is being collected. Sometimes it is very, very difficult to collect data from the entire population. So in statistics, what we do is taking a lot, a lot of samples, okay? So all these small samples that we collect within the population can help us to draw conclusions or answer questions, whatever we are trying to collect the data on, okay? So samples are basically the subset of the entire population. So real quick, for example, a health magazine survey, 1689 people, the resulting report stated that an estimated 56% of the U.S. population are self-conscious are self-conscious about their weight. So in this scenario, the 1689 will actually be the sample because that's that's how many people this magazine surveyed. Oh, oops, sorry, put it down here. All right, so what's the entire population? The entire population will actually be the U.S. populations right here, are self-conscious about their weight, all right? So this 56%, the resulting report stated that an estimated 56%, this 56%, okay, is actually representing, after I collect the data, 56%, is the conclusion that we draw from the people that we surveyed. So eventually when we extend the conclusion from the sample to the population, okay, that is actually called inferential statistic, which is, af which is actually part of the analyzing information, okay? So the population itself is actually the, U is actually the U.S. population. Okay, so any numerical value that describing the population is actually called a perimeter. A perimeter is a numerical description of a population characteristics. 56% of the U.S. population are self-conscious about their weight. A sample statistics, okay, are numerical description for that sample, okay? So real quick, identify the population perimeter or the simple statistics. So in this example, a reason poll of 1215, so this is the simple, all right? A reason poll of 1215, corporate executive showed that the average price of a corporate executive car, okay, is actually $45,000, okay? So the poll of the 1215 corporate executives showed that the average car. So this actually is the sample statistics. 
because this numerical uh, this numerical value actually describing what the sample is. All right, so that's actually considered as a simple statistics. A recent poll of 1215 corporate executives. So I'm, I'm, I'm surveying 1215 corporate executives showed that the average price of a corporate executive car is $45,000. So that's 45,000 is describing all of the, is the average price of those 1215. Okay, of that sample. So if that's the case, that will actually be the sample statistics. Okay, so that's how we use the two different words right here. Uh, identifying, sometimes we need to identify, you know, the type of statistical numbers. Are that is that number describing the entire population or describing the sample? But ultimately, all the sample statistics, okay, all the sample statistics will eventually be used as an estimation of what the population is, okay? So, and I always use this example, the, the median income, the median household income. The median household income is actually impossible to collect from every single household in the, in the United States because not everybody is going to answer that questions, okay? So a lot of times, you know, the government reporting the the median income, the median household income is probably based on um, tax returns, okay? Or, well, a tax return is probably the easiest way to to actually find out about the United States median household income. But as we know, a lot of folks do not um, file income tax, okay? Um, therefore, you, therefore you, you can't really survey or sample the entire population, okay? So eventually all the small samples that took, you know, that people take, eventually we, we're gonna use that numerical value to describe the entire population. So that's how, the, that, that's how statistics works, okay? Um, just understand that it's always very, very difficult to, to actually survey the entire population. Okay, so that's why we're taking lots and lots and lots of samples. All right, um, this objective, I wanna to talk to, quickly talk to you about the sampling methods. Okay, the first one called ran, random sampling. Random sampling is actually the best one. It's a process of using chance to select from the population to be in the sample. Okay, so why do we use random sampling? Because if, you, if, if it is as random as it can, then we can actually be, you know, avoid being biased while we're collecting data, okay? So I use the bingo, I use the, uh, I've got, my picture shows the Powerball, okay? Those are purely by chance, okay? So there's no, no gimmick going on or no bias going on. So random sampling is probably the best way, all right? Sampling without and with replacement, okay? Once an object is selected, okay? Under the random sampling, once I select, once I actually select one object, for example, Powerball wise, okay, without replacement means that that number I draw from the Powerball will never will be removed from rest of the balls. So that would be called sampling without replacement. And that's how that's how Powerball works. Uh, if you fill out the Powerball tickets, you can only you can actually only circle one number, okay? You cannot circle duplicated numbers from the first five number you choose from. The, um, the Powerball part is separate, but just for the first five numbers, you can only choose, um, you know, for any number you choose, you can only use it one time because they actually remove, you know, once that number being selected, it's being removed from the population. It's, it's called sampling without replacement. But now if I put that ball, that I selected back into the population that would be called sampling with replacement, okay? And the difference between the two, without and with replacement, it actually, it actually does change the probability of something to occur, okay? So that's the reason why um, uh, I separate between the with and without replacement, because it actually changes the probability of occurring. 
All right, a stratify sample, another sampling method is called stratify sample, is obtained by separating population into non-overlapping groups. So these four groups together is my population, and I separate my population into four non-overlapping groups. And then I'm gonna select randomly from each group. Okay, that's considered as a stratified sample, which is very similar to something called a cluster sample. Cl cluster sampling method is obtaining by selecting all the individual within a randomly selected group. Okay, so stratify is you got gr different groups and you're gonna randomly selecting, okay, objects or individuals from each group. Okay, that word each is kind of important. But cluster simple is, okay, I got the entire population right here. Okay, I'm actually going to separate them into, into groups. And whatever groups I separated, I'm going to test, I'm going to actually survey or collecting data from from every individual within the randomly selected group. Okay, so this is actually randomly selecting the entire group that is being divided. This is actually randomly selecting individuals within all the groups. So just think about um, classroom surveys. Okay, think about classroom surveys. You as a student are inside, the, you know, let's say if you take class one, two, three, four, you got four classes. So these four classes are actually already being divided into groups. So when we do class surveys, we actually ask everybody within that group. Okay, if we, if we actually ask everybody within that group, that's actually considered as a cluster sampling. Okay, but you know, but sometimes, you know, well, let me take it back. Let me take it back. Okay. So, well, let's not, let's do it this way. Let's explain it this way. Let's say, let's say this is Mr. Chen's class. Okay. And you as a student is in one of my four classes. All right. So if, if you're, if our math 155 has been selected, okay, so I got four non-overlapping groups. So let's assume none of y'all are taking two classes under me. So I have four non-overlapping groups. And then if our class being selected to do survey, then we will survey everybody within the class in this group. So that's considered as a cluster sample, okay? That's considered a cluster cluster sample. So stratified sample will be, okay, Mr. Chen has four non-overlapping, you know, four non-overlapping classes, and then the school will only, the school will come to our class and only randomly selecting students, selecting couple students to do a survey, to do a class survey. That will be considered stratified sample, okay? So the biggest difference is once a group has been divided, randomly selecting individual from the group versus the entire group has been randomly selected and everybody's gonna answer the survey. That's a key difference, all right? So a lot of students get these two confused, which is very, very easy. They're very similar. One is selecting the randomly, you know, one of them is selecting um, randomly from the group. The other one is actually randomly select the group and then, and then survey everybody in, within that group. A systematic sampling method is actually obtained by selecting every so many individual from the population. So like every fourth bottle, okay, then we're gonna take a sample and make sure, you know, the quality control is, you know, we're still withholding the quality control. Convenient sample is in which individual are easily, uh, is where the data are easily obtained and not based on any randomness, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that's the, that's the lowest, <clears throat> that's, you know, that's the most, you know, that's the worst one, I guess you can call it, is a convenient sampling. 
All right, so I got three examples here. Okay, the very first one is very easy. The simple, the soda bottling factory will test every fourth bottle on the production line to assure the product meets the quality standard. So that will be systematic. Okay, systematic means every so many we gotta we, we gotta test on it. Now the next one is a little bit tricky. A soda bottling factory needs to test the quality of the bottles they produce. There are five machines, okay? Machine one, two, three, four, five. Each filling a different size of bottles, okay? Each one is, <sighs> Feeling a different size of bottle. So let's think about this. Okay, let's just call it the size. Oops. Let's call this size one, size two, size three, size four, size five. So let's say I got five different sizes that I'm, that I'm actually um, feeling here. Do I need to test every single bottle under size two, size three, size four? Do I need to test every one of them? Or do I just need to randomly select a few from each sizes? You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to, because this particular machine do all second size. So you don't have to test, you don't have to collect the data on every single one of them. You just need to select a few of them from randomly selecting a few from all the what, from all the bottle, you know, coming out of this machine. So that actually make it a stratified. Okay, now if we have to select, if we have to, um, select every single bottle if we're going to test every single bottle from machine number two of size two then that will be clustered okay a sample in which every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected so this equal chance that's everybody all together has equal chance okay so that would be just the basic uh, random sampling That's as random as you can be, okay? So just real quick, uh, talking a little bit about what the word statistic means and the different sampling techniques and how we can actually take a look at these different types of statistical numbers to describe in the samples in the population. All right, thank you for watching.